I was doing some downloading from the internet directly onto my NAS using Download Station this afternoon, and the performance was really bad. The download speeds were slow, and I knew that I could get traffic over the network to the NAS okay, and it made me think, well, what about connectivity to the NAS itself from the internet? And that made me think, well, is there a speed test for a Synology NAS, so something you can just do directly to say, this is how fast your NAS is downloading from the internet. There is, but it has to be done via the command line. There's no kind of browser interface that you can just means you can just go to sort of fast.com or speed speedtest.net or anything like that. So really, I'm just, uh, I looked online, found a video by a chat on the channel Rick Makes, and I'm just really copying his video here. But there are a few tweaks and a few changes, particularly because of the area of the uh, world that I live in. So you can see here that I'm using DSM 7.0.142218 to update three which is the one uh, that's up, you know, the newest one at time of recording, which is in May 2022. I'm on a DS220 Plus, and uh, there are two things you're going to need to do this. The first of which is Docker, which you can find in the Package Center. If you open up your Package Center, go to Docker, and you'll find that mine says open here because I've already installed Docker. But if you haven't, it takes no time at all. It took me about 15 seconds to install it. Just hit install. And uh, yeah, you'll need Docker there. And you'll also need SSH access. So you'll need terminal access to your NAS. And uh, if you haven't done that before, then you'll need to go into control panel here and to terminal and SNMP and enable the SSH service. You'll notice that I've got my SSH service on a different port to standard. I don't use it on port 22 on my NAS. There's a reason for that, and I'll go over how we can get around that uh, a little bit later. So enable your SSH service. So now you need a client to actually SSH from your computer onto your NAS because we won't actually be doing anything else on the NAS itself. So if you're on a Mac, you can do that with Terminal. If you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can do that sort of in the uh, standard terminal that's built into uh, Windows 10 and 11. But anything else, you can just use something like Putty, which is the one I always use. But I'm on a Mac here, so I have Terminal down in my uh, taskbar or whatever you call this at the bottom. Dock, that's it, at the bottom. Uh, but if you don't know where Terminal is, if you open Launchpad, you can find Terminal in other. I think that might be just off my screen, but it is in the other section in your Launchpad. Terminal is in there. So if I just uh, open that now. I'll zoom in a little bit here on the Terminal window so you can see what I'm doing. But I just want to type in SSH. And then I want to go to uh, the NAS, but I need to type the username first. So I'm going to type my username here, tdcat, at, and then you can put the IP address of the NAS, or you can just put the uh, host name if it has a host name on your network. So I'm just going to put the IP address here, 192.168.1.30. But remember that we had it on a different port. So if you are using your SSH on a different port, then you can just do minus P here, and do 10,022, which is the port I'm using it on. And do you want to continue connecting? Yes. And now I just need to type in the password for my TDCAT account. And there we go. We are on the NAS. So now there's a command. This is the main command we need to run initially uh, through the, the main Docker command to uh, st start off the whole sort of speed test. And that is Docker run space hyphen hyphen rm forward slash say sorry not forward slash and then i don't know how you pronounce this is it mutton or something and then speed test dot uh, hyphen sorry c l i so there we go that command <laughs> that should be should be right and if we hit return we got permission denied and the reason we got permission denied is because i didn't do it as a super user so what you actually need to do if I just go, I can press the up arrow to just uh, bring that command back in. And I have to do a sudo, super user do, and then run the command. So now I'll need to enter a super user password on the NAS. So uh, uh, and using any account effectively that has admin, full root admin privileges. Now I can run this speed test. And what what it'll do first time the very first time you do this it'll actually have to download a uh, an image that it can use to do the speed test or something like that it downloads just downloads something locally so you might have to run that command once and then run it again but you'll also see that we've got another problem here 
And that's because I am in uh, Europe. I'm in the UK, which means that GDPR is a factor for us, basically. We have to uh, agree that certain data can be transmitted to a company over the internet. So Ookla, who do the speed tests, use certain data. They, you know, they track certain data of where speed tests are done, locations, all sorts of things. And so I have to acknowledge that and put in this extra flag on the command to say, accept GDPR. So I can just add that onto the end here, accept GDPR, that's saying, yes, you can take all my data, I don't mind run that again and now it'll connect and it'll do its little latency test to start with and then it should just perform a uh, speed test. So remember even though I've got the NAS window in the background this isn't actually being performed on the NAS I'm performing this on my Mac through a terminal window SSH'd into the NAS and there we have a uh, a completed speed test with 933 megabits down 106 megabits up and we have the results URL here as well so if I just uh, copy this I can put this into my uh, browser now, and I should go straight to the page that has that result on it, which it does. There we go. Just shows that that is a legitimate speed test done with Ookla. And uh, I just thought that was a really nice sort of way of doing it. It's uh, pretty simple. You know, once you've set it up, a bit of playing around here. I understand that people sometimes aren't too comfortable with the um with the with the command line stuff and terminal and all that. But uh, really, this has proven to me that my connection from the internet to the NAS over the network is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So whatever problems I was having with the download station is either a download station problem or it's um, just a problem with the site that I was downloading something from. So, I, you know, it just, just eliminates one of those things from the equation. Hope that was useful. Uh, and if you uh, enjoyed that, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. Or if you've got any other questions, just uh, put them in the comments. And if I can answer them, I will do. Thanks for watching.